The importance of memory. Although many species can note the passing of time, only our own species, Homo sapiens, is capable of sharing accounts or memories of past events and turning these into stories or histories. Humans have been discovering more and more precise ways of keeping track of time. That means that we developed more accurate ways of keeping records and recording history. But what is exactly history? We could argue forever about that, but let's just agree that it means a shared knowledge of the past. All living things seem to carry memories of the past. Animals need to be able to keep track of time so they know when to hunt, when to hibernate and when to have children. Even plants seem to record the passing of time. If you slice through a tree, you'll see the growth rings. Every year a new layer grows just under the bark, and every ring represents one year of growth. But tracking the past is not exactly the same thing as having a memory of the past. Only humans can have a memory of the past, because only humans have a communication system powerful enough to express what they learn and know. We don't really know when humans first began to share their knowledge of the past, but our understanding of collective learning suggests that they did so quite early. We know that people who cannot write down information rely on such oral tradition, and they develop powerful ways of remembering. History based on written documents appears quite late in human history. The first written documents date back to about 5,000 years ago, in Egypt and ancient summer. However, wherever writing appeared, it was used to write accounts of the past. And even if most people weren't able to read or to write, those accounts were very important because they became the basis for further historical documents. Written documents then started to be seen as more authoritative because, obviously, once something was written down, it was much harder to try to modify the events of the story. But it was really with the Enlightenment era in the 18th century that the uh, notion of evidence-based history um, became the most important form of history writing. Today, all professional historians understand that their first task is to get the history right. That means checking all the details against hard evidence and preferably against written documents. And uh, nowadays, history based on written documents is still the main form of historical scholarship. But written documents have a serious limitation. They only reach back a few thousand years. And only in the middle of the 20th century, we started find finding more accurate ways of keeping records of the events that happened before there were written documents. Today, however, we have access to better records and uh, more types of evidence about the past than ever before. But memory is not only the instrument through which we can understand and know our past, it is also the instrument through which we can gaze into the future. Our past feelings, emotions, experiences, our past identity shape us and our future thoughts and actions. We must live in the present. The present is uh, fun, uh, but uh, temporary and brief. Living in the present can be funny and liberating, but it is definitely ephemeral. So if we don't spend time recording and reminiscing it, then we risk to live a traceless presence. We risk that our grandchildren will never know who we were or what we stood for. Now we think that we will always be able to remember, and then we discover this is not the case, as we struggle to recall past uh, feelings or faces, events or dates. Nowadays, it is a matter of fact that uh, rather than relying on our brains, we rely on email search tools for past conversations, Google for old remedies or recipes, and uh, Facebook for people we used to know or events we went to. Our memories are becoming secondary, equivocal and time-consuming to what computers can tell us clinically and accurately in just a few seconds. Nowadays, younger generations seem to be very comfortable with their computers, la uh, iPads, smartphones and watching television all at once. But how much of it do they actually take in and remember? Is it the sign of a highly trained multitasking brain? Or is only a little part of that that is actually sticking around and going for the long term? We have to be very careful that our memory spam doesn't become memory span. Memory is the only instrument through which we can appreciate our past and our achievements in a world where so much is happening all at once. In conclusion, in my opinion, uh, everyone has to be a witness of the events and experiences he has lived. In fact, every witness has his own uh, experiences and tells, and tells his own truth. 
So only if all the witnesses tell their truths, it is possible to create and maintain the memory of a society or of a particular event or of a historical moment. I'd like to end my speech with one of the most famous Kierkegaard quotes about life that can underline the importance of memory for our lives, but also for our societies. Life can only be understood backwards, but it must believe forwards.